Hello, my name's Caleb, and this is my Shape Oco 2. Uh, I've been making a lot of videos documenting the progress that I've made with it, and I thought it'd be interesting to start a, a series of videos that basically kind of go through some of the more complex or confusing uh, aspects of desktop CNC milling. So this first video is going to be focused on stepper motors, which are the device that makes the CNC machine actually move around its cutting envelope. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so here's a basic stepper motor. This is a NEMA 23 stepper motor. It is an 8-wire um, style setup, and it has a holding torque of from somewhere between 113 ounces per inch and 156 ounces per inch. Now basically those are the kind of the very basic stats and um, uh, features that you're really going to be looking for in a stepper motor is how many wires does it have that connected to it and the holding torque um, spec which you know this is obviously kind of the American measurement if you will uh, but there is also plenty of um, these things that uh, will be um, specced out with uh, metric um, style measurements. So you have to kind of get used to converting between the two and understanding both of them. Um, so kind of talking about NEMA 23s and NEMA four, uh, 17s, sorry. Um, Really, when you first start looking at these things, you think at first, since everybody talks about upgrading to NEMA 23s, then it just must be mean that uh, NEMA 23s are, in fact, better than NEMA 17s overall. But this is kind of a misnomer because basically NEMA 23 or NEMA 17 really just refers to how wide it is, you know, and that's it. Basically, there is the there is a, obviously there is more surface area on a NEMA 23 because the magnet inside it can be larger. Uh, that's connected to the shaft. Thus, the holding torque is potentially greater, but that's not necessarily the case. So you have to keep in mind holding torque. That's the number that you're really going to be wanting to keep track of. Um, like for instance, the NEMA 17 stepper motor that's on my z-axis right there which you can buy at inventables.com is I believe 62 ounces per inch holding torque so it's much less than this NEMA 23 which is identical to the ones that are on my X and Y axis now the difference between the difference between um, the different holding torque specs here where you have right here you have 113 and then the other two ones are uh, 156 are the different configurations you have unipolar and then you have bipolar now this particular motor because it's eight wire has bipolar series and bipolar uh, parallel and that's because that basically uh, pertains to the wiring uh, configuration of the eight wires uh, with a bipolar setup, you only use uh, four wires, you know, that are connected directly to the um, to the stepper motor driver. In a unipolar configuration, all eight of these wires would be connected to the stepper motor uh, driver board. Uh, there are different types of, and that's another thing to keep in mind, is that there are different types of stepper motor drivers. There are unipolar drivers, like the Hobby CNC um boards are unipolar drivers and you have to have at least a five wire six wire or an eight wire uh, stepper motor to to work that you know properly you can't use a four wire bipolar stepper motor which I should probably point out right there that your configurations of wires that you're going to find on stepper motors are four wires five wires six wires and eight wires as far as it goes if you choose to work with a bipolar stepper motor driver you can configure any of these wiring configurations to be bipolar. But if you have a unipolar stepper motor driver, you will have to get at least a five or at least a five, six, or eight, or make sure that 
whatever the driver specs say that you or how many wires you need, you you have. Um, so having an eight wire just gives you more flexibility, I think, and that's especially shown off easily in the um, current per uh, current uh, per phase and the rated voltage that is necessary to drive a stepper motor like this one. In its unipolar configuration, it takes uh, 4.32 volts, you know, to be optimum. That's how much it's going to be pulling. Uh, and for the current per phase, it will it requires 2.4 amps per phase. So that's uh, you know going to be around a total of uh, 4.8 amps total that you're going to have to be drawing off of your power supply and everything. Now moving on to bipolar series and bipolar parallel, you can see the freedom that an 8-wire uh, stepper motor uh, gets. Uh, basically, if, for instance, in my case, I have a Pololu DRV8825 uh, stepper motor driver setup, and I only have a, a maximum current per phase uh, capacity of 2.2 amps. And if we look at parallel, we would really only be able to do, or we would not be able to ever achieve the full holding torque of 156 because you need to um, be able to push 3.4 uh, amps per phase into the stepper motor driver. And the driver just can't do it, but in series we can we can easily accomplish the same amount of holding torque with only 1.7 amps per phase, per phase, and so that that becomes the real advantage of an eight wire is you can have it both ways, and so the advantage of being able to if you had a, a stepper motor driver that could handle pushing. Uh, 3.4 amps out, you know, to the stepper motor driver, or stepper motor, sorry, um, what we'd be able to, to, to do is not only have the same amount of holding torque, but we would be able to accelerate to our max, maximum velocity much faster, or potentially much faster, um, depending on the loads, or, you know, what we're actually, you know, using the stepper motor for. Um, but that that's kind of the downside of using um, serial or series. Sorry, uh, it's it's one of those things that it's a it's it's like everything in electronics. There's a give and take. If you if you do something like this, where you are basically giving more voltage, but then less amperage is needed, it it will you know harm the the performance sometimes but in this case you know holding torque is more important and it's not like you would be pushing the full you know current anyways and while you could potentially be drawing the full 2.2 amps out of my stepper motor drivers unless you're you know really close to you know 3.4 or at it you're not really going to be happy with the holding torque performance potentially but that's basically some some of the more important things that you need to know. So one, NEMA 23, NEMA 17, that, that number refers to the mounting plate and how wide the motor is. And really, when you get a much larger um, holding torque, NEMA 23, instead of, it's not bigger around, it's bigger, or it's longer. And so you, you know, you have to accommodate for that extra length. But that's where it's getting its extra torque is that the magnet inside of the of the motor is longer and thus has more surface area. So the other things is two, holding torque is the the main number that you probably should be looking at when you're shopping around for your uh, stepper motors and what you compare with. Um, there's also many other things like, for instance, the degrees per step. Uh, normally, most of them that you're going to find are 1.8 degrees per step, which is pretty standard. And then also, I believe, 0.9 uh, degrees per step is another one that's very common. That breaks down to a motor like this with 1.8 degrees per step has 200 steps per revolution. And one that has uh, 
one that has nine degrees per step has 400 steps per revolution. So that's something to keep in mind also. But basically, you know, keep in mind what, what type of um, stepper motor drivers that you're looking at, whether or not they're unipolar or bipolar. Keeping in mind always that if you, if you have a bipolar stepper motor uh, driver, then any stepper motor that is, you know, from four wires all the way up to eight wires will wire up just fine. And you just have to have a documentation like this that gives you, uh, gives you wire, a wiring di diagram of how you should configure it for different uh, wiring solutions. So I think that that's where we're going to end this video. I hope that it was helpful. Um, I think that I will probably have a follow-up to this later on if I, you know, run into anything. But also, if you know, make a, if you have some other uh, insights that I missed or you think that are very important too for people that are newbies that are coming into this without much knowledge, uh, please uh, let's discuss it below in in the comments section. Um, and also, don't forget to rate this video because it's very helpful for me to know if this kind of video is um, helpful to other people or useful. Um, so if you like it, like it. If you hate it, please, you know, give me a thumbs down. Tell me that I'm wrong. But if you're going to thumbs, uh, give me a thumbs down, please, um, you know, give me a comment that says, well, you're, you're way off on this and I, this is why. So, because I'm, I am prone to, uh, to make mistakes, you know, and there's one thing that I know as a, as a beginner in any field of, of study, it, it's the hardest to collect knowledge when you don't have any experience or any basis of knowledge that you can test somebody else's explanations of things by. And so it's hard for, I'm sure it would be hard for anybody that is totally new and has never heard of stepper motor drivers or stepper motors or CNC machines to not know if I'm, I'm telling the truth or that I'm, you know, off my rocker or that. So Please, you know, it, I think it would be very helpful for everybody to have a good, um, healthy discussion about this. So, uh, thanks for watching and uh, just keep on making stuff. Bye.